Have you ever had anything that you wanted to buy? You know, you've watched it for a long time. You've seen it on TV, on commercials, or maybe on a website from a place that you wanted to buy it, but you really couldn't justify it at the time. You didn't have the money, or maybe it wasn't a priority, so you waited. And maybe you watched this thing for, what, over a year? So it's been a long time. But finally, one day, you see it for a price that you're willing to pay, and in fact, you're gonna get a great deal. So you know what? You buy it and you wait for the thing to come and finally after a few days it shows up and you're so excited and you can't wait to open this thing. But as soon as you open it up, you realize it's not exactly what you had hoped it would be. And for me today, that's the Topps Tex Creek XL. So the Topps Tex Creek XL, it's right in that sweet spot for me, right around a six inch blade. Now a six inch blade is what I started with when I first started getting into camping and you know camp tasks, light bushcraft, day camping, all that stuff. And so when I find a blade that is the most appealing to me, it tends to be in that size range. And I think it's a great all around blade size, you know, something that you can bring as almost a one blade option if you needed to, if you're trying to pack reasonably light and you don't want to bring you know, a big chopper and also maybe some smaller blades for finer tasks. You can pretty much just get away, in my opinion, with a six inch blade. So when I saw the Tex Creek XL, I was pretty excited. I mean, look at this thing. The thing is beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous knife. Great lines. Beautiful heat treatment amazingly built nice handle scales I mean this whole package is great you know suitable um, leather sheath and when I saw this I got a good deal on it and man I was excited I haven't even used this knife yet it's got a virgin edge look at those red liners tell you when I saw this I was uh, I thought this was sweet you know the only thing that I had really heard about it that most people didn't like was this aggressive jimping on the spine but you know I figured what the hell I'm not gonna care I mean for the amount that I honestly really use my knives I mean I use them quite a bit but at the same time I'm not spending a whole day using them so I don't know if I use it and it gives me a little bit of a hot spot I'll deal with it or if it's a little bit uncomfortable I'll deal with it if I really have to, you know what, I'll put on gloves. So I wasn't too worried about that. So what is it about this knife that has me so disappointed? Unfortunately, it's the handle. The blade looks sweet. I mean, again, I haven't used it yet. I bet you it's going to be excellent. But the handle has me kind of bummed out. And I'll tell you why. When you look at the knives that I've been using the most lately, I mean, my SE6 has always been my go-to. And most recently, I found out that the BK7 was pretty badass and maybe I should have been using it a lot longer than I have been. Probably should have picked one of these up a long time ago. But what I'm really going to point out here is the size of the handles. I mean, look at the size of the handle on that BK7. And even on the SE6. Then when you get to the tops, man, it's just sort of undersized. And at first, when I first saw the knife, I guess I didn't realize how small that handle was. I thought it had a little bit more meat to it than it really does. Which made it look like it was going to have a really comfortable shape. Nice little finger grooves to keep you locked in. Unfortunately for me and my hand size, that's really not the case. Beyond that, one of the things that I've really grown to love about the SE is the finger choil. Now, unfortunately, the Topps Tex Creek XL does not have a choil. And I really think that if it had a choil, 
that would make a big difference for me in the overall comfort. Now I do know it would lose some effective length on the blade, but at the same time, I think that choil would have added some comfort that would have really made a big difference for me with this handle and the way that I like to use this size of a knife. This blade has a little bit of a balance problem for me. It's very forward blade heavy. It's not very centrally balanced. Um, you know, right where your thumb and index finger are on other blades tends to be sort of the middle point of the balance of the weight. And in this particular blade, because the handle is so thin and these slabs are reasonably thin on the um, handle scales, it really ends up being forward heavy. Now, I bet you the uh, original Tex Creek, which is not the XL, would be a lot better balanced. And it, it actually makes me wonder if I should try this blade in the standard size, because I bet you it would be excellent. I bet you, based on the feel of this and, you know, a uh, blade in that size range, uh, I think it's more of a four and a half or a five inch blade. I'd have to double check that. Uh, but I think it would actually make a big difference in the way that this feels. And especially with that forward weighted, I mean, look, if I just let that go, I mean, I don't want to drop it, but if I just let that go, it literally just rocks forward on me. Now to give you a comparison, here's the SE6. Now, I mean, I'm literally letting that go completely right at that pinch point and it is perfectly balanced. So it makes the knife feel lighter, which, you know, it does make a difference, especially if you're gonna be using it for a long time. And for me, the way the grip is on this just fills out my hand better and it feels a lot more natural. That to me is just thin. And you now I'm running out of real estate on the back of the knife, especially any reverse grip. And to me, you know, right where my finger wraps in, you know, I don't want to be back here. I want to be, I want to be up in here. And so, I don't know. I mean, it feels okay, but you know, my pinky is kind of rubbing on that little nub there and it's just not, not a great fit for me. So anyway, that's some details about the weight of the blade and how the handle feels. So to further my conflict is the sheath system. Now the one I got has a dangler that's not a stock dangler. Uh, this was after, uh, added after the fact and same with the lanyard, but still, I mean, you know, yes, this is a suitable leather sheath, no doubt. This is, you know, a good quality carry option. It's gonna feel nice on your belt. Doesn't weigh too much. It's easy to keep it reasonably clean, and if you need to, oil it up again. Hey, simple, easy. However, you know, for me and my style and how I like to carry my knife, my Essie has a really nice sheath system. And so, you know, for me, having a little pouch and a nice drop on the side of my belt, um, it's just a better carry option for how I like to carry a knife than the leather is. So that stacks this up against the tops. Again, um, putting the uh, SE ahead of it and in my mind gives me more compelling reason to carry it and maybe not bring the tops XL with me. So anyway, um, that is you know another compelling argument to be had. And then also, with my newfound friend, the BK7, you know, I got this with a real nice Dangler AZ Welky Kydex sheath. Thing fits perfect, you know, nice and light, durable, uh, great fit, uh, it's a good style, nice and slim. So again, even if I went up, uh, you know, an inch in blade size, you know, I'm still rocking a pretty solid, um, you know, nice, well form fit sheath. And so I would probably even put this knife up ahead of the Topps Tex Creek XL in terms of what I would choose to carry on a, you know, a day hike or um, day camping or bushcraft or anything like that. So uh, again, and, and even if I wanted to turn this up a notch, 
I have this sweet 710 Customs Kydex leather combo uh, that fits the BK9. But the BK7 fits in pretty slick too. And you know, that's a real nice sharp package. So I don't know. If I didn't have these blades sitting in front of me, maybe I would take the Topps Tex Creek and I would keep it. I'd use it. I'd give it a little more of a, uh, you know, a thorough run through. I'll tell you, I really wanted to like this. I have sat with this now in my hands, just holding that handle for almost two hours. <laughs> um, and I'm still not sold. So I don't know. I really want to like this. I really, really want it to be a good option for me, um, but I just can't necessarily justify it. I don't know if it's there for me, and I don't know yet if I would keep it or if I would truly recommend it for somebody with uh, a large hand. I mean, look at this thing. It is absolutely gorgeous. This knife is beautiful. I mean, the shape is just gorgeous. The handle looks perfect. It really does. I mean, ugh. Just all the lines, the way it all came together. Oh, man. It bums me out. I don't, I don't honestly know what I'm going to do. I don't know if I'm going to keep this. I mean, let's be realistic here. I'm a gear user, a knife user. I am not a collector. If I was a collector, I would keep this. Hands down, no doubt in my mind. And if I didn't have the SE6, I'd be hard pressed to get rid of this. But at this point, you know, where I have other blades in a similar size range, and, you know, I'm kind of getting in business to be moving through gear and trying different things, do I really want to be invested in this if I don't think I'm going to use it? And where I haven't even used the blade yet, even though I probably should, I know I can turn this around and get my money back. I mean, I pay for all my gear out of my own pocket, so it means a lot to me to recoup my investment when I can. And so, I don't know. I don't even know if I'm going to use this blade, and it's killing me. It is killing me to not use this thing. Ugh. I don't know. We'll see.